Hi, I'm Blake with Fishbait, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to configure LaserFish Directory Server 11 after a new installation. We'll talk about how to perform the initial configuration, as well as some best practices that I like to use. This video will not go through all the different settings within Directory Server, but I plan on creating a video in the future that will. Let's get started. The first step after you've installed LaserFish Directory Server is to specify a SQL server for it to connect to. The first field is asking for the display name. This value is shown in various places throughout the LaserFish products, which is why I prefer to use my company name for this value. The second field is where we enter our SQL server instance name. In the third field, we will enter what we want the Directory Server database to be named. I always preface my LaserFish database names with LF underscore to set them apart if SQL Server is hosting other databases. The last option is whether you want Directory Server to use Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication. If you choose Windows authentication, it will use the account that is running the LaserFish Directory Server Windows service. If you choose SQL Server authentication, you will enter the username and password of a user you created in SQL Server. Once we click the Create Site button, it will create a Directory Server SQL database. If you're wondering what the Attach Site button does, it's used when moving LaserFish Directory Server to a new server. The next step is configuring the primary license. The option you choose here will depend on if you are using an activation key or if you have a primary license file. In most cases, you'll be using an activation key that you will get from the LaserFish support site. I'm going to select that option and then enter my activation key and click the OK button. Once Directory Server is licensed, you'll be taken to the overview page where you can see the licenses for your organization. The next thing I'm going to do is configure some of the directory server settings that I consider to be best practice. The first one is going to be setting the MFA inherited behavior is enabled for LaserFish users option to yes. Setting this option to yes will enable multi-factor authentication or MFA for LaserFish users with an MFA status set to inherited. The setting is used for accounts created in LaserFish directory server only. So even if you don't think you will ever use a LaserFish account, I still recommend setting it up on the off chance that you do. For the settings for our Active Directory Identity Provider, I'm going to set the Use TLS option to Yes. Before enabling this setting, you will want to check with your IT department that your Active Directory domain is using TLS. If you have any failover domain controllers, be sure to set those here. Next, I will configure my Active Directory synchronization rules. First, I'll set the Enable Active Directory Synchronization option to Yes and test that Directory Server is connecting to Active Directory successfully. Everything looks good. Now, I will add a rule for each of the different user license types that I have. In Active Directory, I have created three groups, one for each license type. I will select the first AD group and set the license type that users in that group should be assigned. I'll do the same thing for the other two AD groups and click the Save button.
The next group of settings I'll change are related to the password reset feature in Directory Server. Again, even if you don't think you will ever use Laserfish accounts, I recommend configuring this. I'll first go to the Email Server tab under Settings and create a new profile. For profile name, you can enter anything you want. I recommend entering something that will tell you which email server it is using though. Next, enter your SMTP server and how you want Directory Server to authenticate to it. You can then test your settings by entering a test email address to send an email to. Next, I will create an email template. This template is going to be used for the password reset email, so I will name it accordingly and enter a value for the subject. I will leave all the other values as is, but you can customize it however you would like. Now I will set the password policy for LaserFish users in Directory Server. Keep in mind that this policy does not apply to Windows Active Directory, LDAP, or SAML accounts. The settings I am using are a mix of industry standard best practices and keeping end users happy. I recommend setting these same settings in your repository when setting up its password policy as well. After configuring the password policy, I now need to associate the email profile and template with the root organization in Directory Server. To do this, I will go to Accounts, Organizations, and then click on Root. I will then select the Settings tab. Here, I will set the server and template values to what I created. The next few settings are related to groups and accounts. I will first create three groups, Forms Administrators, Forms Process Creators, and LaserFish Administrators. These three groups will be used in LaserFish Forms and the LaserFish Repository. Once the groups are created, I'm going to run the AD synchronization to bring in my administrator account and then assign it 
to the directory server groups that I want it to have and click save. If you have a subscription license for your LaserFish implementation, you will want to set the Renew Subscription Primary License automatically to Yes. When this setting is set to Yes, Directory Server will attempt to renew an expiring primary license 30 days before the expiration date automatically. The last settings I will look at are the settings for the LaserFish Directory Server Security Token Service. This is where you can remove specific types of login options from the STS login page. For example, if you will only be using Windows Active Directory accounts, you would check the box to hide LaserFish authentication and the Always Use Windows Authentication box. This would remove the fields for you to manually enter a username and password. That is just an example, and there are reasons to show those fields even if you are just using Windows Active Directory accounts. I recommend keeping the settings to the defaults, though, until you finish configuring the other LaserFish products. And that's it. We have now completed configuring LaserFish Directory Server 11. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep fishing.